Hi there, so in this tutorial we are going to start creating um, our characters for this week. Um, so by now I hope we have a um, sprite sheet um, with some of your assets built. Um, obviously there are a lot of tutorials and these assets need to be built up over a period of time. Um, so I wouldn't expect you to have this many um, at this stage of this week. Um, so um, the first things first, you should have your um, thumbnails. Um, so here were mine that I used, um, as I've shown to some of you already. Um, if you haven't done so, um, it's it's really worth doing that as a good sort of starting point. And I did these by just um, literally sketching out some random um, sort of silhouette shapes and trying to make something out of them. And obviously, in some cases, it worked better than in others. Um, what I did was sort of selected the best six ones and then I sort of decided to select um, my favourite uh, from my favourite and I think I like them all uh, with exception of number four um, but in the end I went with number two. Um, from that I went through um, several sort of iterations testing colour. Um, I played about with the facial features um, and the hat a little bit and the staff um, which went through from that to this stage and um, from that I um, I've also developed some staff sketches as well um, and then eventually this was my sort of final character so hopefully what you'll be able to do is scan your drawings in your thumbnails um, maybe develop them a little bit more um, digitally or within your own sketches and see a character that sort of fits your game and um, what I'd like you to do is once you've scanned it in, what we're going to do is create um, a new um, scene um, and basically I'll just quickly show you this is my um, end character so I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see that okay um, based on the illustration now we're starting on the side because um, I know a lot of people um, are doing side scrolling games so I thought this would be more practical so what we're going to do is go file new I'm going to go 32 by 32 pixels. Um, that should mean that we end up with something that will easily be able to walk across this bridge and will fit into per perspective of all of these elements. Okay. And what we're going to do is push is get our drawing. We're going to get your drawing. We're going to sort of select the area we want. Push Control C. Now I've done this at A3, so I imagine that your characters will fit a lot better than mine will as you'll see so push control shift C and push control V obviously if we zoom out we push control T for transform we'll end up with this really really huge image so I'm going to take that right down as you can see it is literally just a few um, pixels okay and um, we should push enter it will blur out something like that. Now it's not very clear, as I say, with yours being smaller if they're scanned in at A4, um, it should be a little bit easier for you. Um, however, you know, I, I, I've got a rough idea. I understand my character, I know how it looks, so I can work off this. So, first things first, um, you need to think about the colour of your character. So, I'm following in line with my ideas, and obviously, the, when I made these sort of plants, um, I knew what they were going to reflect. Um, and so we're just going to start by selecting um, that sort of purple and what we're going to do is literally by selecting the pencil tool um, draw around this sort of shape that we want okay and um, just remember to sort of flesh it out we've got a sort of two part there want it's underneath to be purple um, sometimes just getting that finer balance can be a little tricky okay so um, and I'm going to just draw the face in maybe a little bit bigger than that I think we've got some hair coming down as well going down all the way down the body And obviously we have um, the body coming out. Going back in. Okay, 
so okay um, it's going to take a little bit of jigging around to get used to but this is a sort of rough outline for our character so what we're going to do now is start to plot in the other colors um, for which I went for let's just close some of these off um, our sprite sheet I went for this sort of tip this blue here and we're going to paint um, so depending on what color it is you may want to choose your own color scheme I'm going to start to block in um, the colors and actually create this sort of shape okay what you might want to do is uh, in fact we're not going to paint all the way down because we want to retain some of the purple what you might want to do is actually go on to um, copy over your image at this size and just make sure that it fits in with your assets Okay, and I'm just going to do the same underneath for the clothing and then we're going to pick um, a sort of colour for the ha hair so so go for a sort of washed out blonde Just get that painted in and we're just going to actually bring that down there we go um, and now we just need to get a sort of nice sort of olive pastel skin colour obviously if you have an alien character you may want to be a bit more adventurous with that but we do need to differentiate from the actual um, hair colour, otherwise they will blend, and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go for a sort of like peachy olive type colour. I'm just going to blend that in there. Okay. Obviously, um, we want to sort of cut this away from the background, so we're just going to push Shift, push Control X, and create a new layer. Hide that original one. Push Control V should fall in pretty much the same place because there isn't much else where for it to go so what we're going to do now is just tweak a couple of bits so I think this needs to be out a little bit more to get the balance right in between the front and the back um, in addition I think that that's okay yeah actually it's worked out quite well I think maybe we could shorten this oh. push E for the eraser again we can so we'll get that up. Mm, it won't let me actually delete. Oh, because the brush has come back up. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Okay, so B for brush, E for eraser. So um, push it up for the colour picker, and I think I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our sort of flat and base image. We now need to make it feel a lot more 3D, and we do that by adding light and adding shadow. So again, we're gonna I think my light colour my lightest colour is sort of gonna be this sort of sky blue. Push OK. And now we just gotta imagine that the light is hitting all these sort of front parts. Okay. And bring it round. Now obviously, as this is a, a round object um where we actually have the shape moving towards us, we need to sort of replicate that the light will be doing that. Okay. So um again I'm just gonna go back to the colour picker and what we're gonna do is look for something in between these so something around here and then we're gonna paint that on okay remember you know it's a it's a lot thicker this time the gate's gonna come round because it's a 3D three dimensional object and finally we're just going to make select a darker one now for um, our darkest sort of shadow okay and again, we want that to sort of come out where it's a little bit thicker. Okay. And now all that's left is for us to do it on this part as well. So, um, again, we're going to start lighter. Let's sort of colour all of this in. And then again, we're going to just get colour picker and we're just going to go between these two. Mm. 
Okay, now if we zoom out by pushing control and minus, we start to see that that actually now is looking circular and 3D and wicked. That's what we want. So we're going to take use these same colors by pushing up, and we're going to apply the same to um, the lower body. Again, these are this comes out as well towards us. So we're just going to add a little bit in there, and then obviously we're going to add our shadow in. Okay, just going to zoom out and make sure again that that is feeling 3D. Yep. It is. And you'd be surprised how quick this is to do the results are to achieve. Now we're going to create an arm piece. So what we're going to do is, as these are these midtones, we're going to use the dark shadow and the really light to sort of define that. So I've sort of left enough room for the hand, and bring it down like that, and then bring the light down. It may even be worth putting the light there, and then getting this. Obviously, bringing it around. Okay, that hand might be a little big, but let's see how it looks as a look. Yeah, I think that's okay. She has quite big hands as it is because she's quite small. So, the next stage is to add um, the shadow for the face. Um, but first, we're going to add the eye in. Okay. Now, on my original one of my original concept drawings, you will see here, I gave her a black outline for the eye. Okay, so we're going to follow in um, in that way, and we're going to actually create a three-piece eye. So what I'm going to do is select the eraser. I'm going to erase that part of the nose, and then going to go back to the brush by pushing B, and this time we're going to block out an eye, and we're going to swap that round and create a white. Okay. Now that should fall quite nicely in there. Okay, cool. So you can see it there as well. Um, now what we're going to do is bring on. Um, we're actually going to take this shadow a little bit further back. Actually, take this a little bit more around this eye. Okay, just so a little bit extra. Now we need to um, give this idea that it's underneath. She so we probably have to take that. Oh, okay. Now what we're going to do is add a darker sk skin tone. So again, we don't want to go too dark. So it will too close to yellow because it will blend in with um, the hair, and we won't be able to differentiate that, which is not what we want. Okay, again with that we can add that in. Um, and then for the hair, simply what we're going to do is um, again going for a sort of brown, but we don't want it to be too close to our skin colour. So maybe a sort of orange a little bit brighter would work. Okay, is what I sort of did before. Um, and what we're going to do is start off with some shadow and actually add some streaks in but we need to make sure they are random a bit more random otherwise it'll f you know that sort of pattern will feel repeated and we don't want that so okay, if we put that there if we just zoom out a little bit and we're just going to remove one of these there we go and I still think we can actually make that a little bit darker So what we're going to do is just push up, bring this up, we're just going to take it down to this little brown. And hopefully, yeah, that's maybe it still needs to be a little bit lighter because it still feels like it's the skin, as I said, this is quite a tricky um, part it's a little bit warmer hopefully that will make it feel like it's the hair and not the face which I think that will does the trick let's take a look yeah I think that works wicked okay so let's just hide our background and we have our character okay so that's our side view um, 
So what we're going to do now is just highlight it, Control Shift and C, and Control V, and just make sure that you know it sort of fits in with our objects. Yeah, absolutely does. Again, you can imagine her walking across. Yeah, definitely sort of see her against the other objects. Wicked. Okay, so obviously, in a couple, in two weeks time, we're going to look at adding some walk, you know, walking the walk cycles. So don't worry about that. Cool. So okay, we still have some more elements to add. So if we go back to our my original design, uh, you will see we have these spots on top, which you want to include. I do have them on the body, but there is not enough um, information there for us to get those on. But we do need to add these spots, okay? So, what we're going to do is go in um, and sort of pick the opposite in the in the red category here. Um, it's, these colours, you know, sort of really do work, bounce off each other really well and create that sort of illusion, um, a really sort of vibrant illusion. So, what we're going to do is just sort of circulate some of these. Okay, I can have some coming out more, some of them a little bit more flat. I mean, where these aren't angled, it does tend to be a little bit harder to get them feeling exactly how we want them. You know, without them being too big, like that. Uh, but we can get away with it. So yeah, we know we can pull these around, and you know, just get them sort of dotted around on there. I think I'm going to take these up slightly. So for some reason, when I push E, it doesn't immediately go to um, eraser, which is a bit weird. I haven't worked out why it's doing that yet, but there we go. Push up, we can do that selection. Push again. So um, what we need to do now, again with these, is add some darker parts for shadow. So on the back we're going to keep that as closer to the objects as possible. And then we're just going to add some light, some really light parts as well. To give you the idea that these are sort of crystally and reflecting. There we go. Fix that there. So now we can zoom out. We end up with this really cool sort of looking hat. And um, considering that was my original design, you now I think that's as close as we're going to get. So again, um, these are much more straightforward than um, our assets that we we're working on last week um, or this week. And again. That fits in really nicely, and there's the one I made earlier. Uh, you know, and they're looking fairly close. Okay, so cool. Go ahead, um, finish off your uh, designs. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at the front view, um, which is going to be a little bit trickier because of um, the RPG style. Now we're sort of going to be looking down on the character, and um, I'll see you there. Okay, so good luck.